Yeah, we're going to talk about that and talk about that in just a moment, Congressman. It's Willie Geis. Good to see you, Congressman Gallagher. Um, I was reading through, and you acknowledged Joe Biden's win in your state of. Wisconsin, you knocked down conspiracy theories about Dominion voting systems. You've gone through that and you've been pretty clear about that. So what's your reaction to the senator from your state, Ron Johnson, yesterday perpetuating conspiracy theories about January the 6th and saying they weren't all Trump supporters, that they were provocateurs and that they were anti-Trump forces? Well, I didn't see the hearing. Uh, I know that Ron Johnson uh, legitimately wants to get to the bottom of any allegation of voter fraud or voter irregularity. Uh, I think there were a lot of states that made changes in the midst of the pandemic, and we could have a dispassionate argument about whether those changes were wise going forward. And I do think it's incumbent upon every state, Wisconsin included, to do a version of what Florida did post-2000, which is to take a look at what makes sense, what doesn't, you know, where we need to have a little bit more legislative oversight. But ultimately, what I believe is that that's not the province of, of the federal government, right? It's not the role of the federal government to tell the state of Wisconsin how to conduct its election, let alone how to allocate its electors. But yesterday, though, Congressman, just to be clear, he was talking about what happened on January the 6th when he said they were provocateurs, anti-Trump forces. Do you believe that, too? Uh, I didn't see what the, the senator said. What it, what, that the, He was talking about the attack on January 6th, saying that the Indian. people who attacked the Capitol on January the 6th weren't necessarily Trump supporters, that they were provocateurs, perhaps Antifa, people who infiltrated it, and that most of the Trump supporters were peaceful. Uh, I don't think that, uh, well, again, I didn't see the hearing or exactly what Senator Johnson said. I think all of us could look at that and say, okay, most of the people that showed up at the rally that morning including that the Air Force veteran who got killed tragically, didn't wake up thinking, I'm going to be violently assaulting the U.S. Capitol, let alone uh, losing my life, right? There was probably a smaller number of people that showed up that day thinking, I want to break things, I want to make a mess. These are sort of like the Proud Boys crowd. And then I think there was an even smaller number, militia types, far-right militia, that showed up with a no-kidding plan that they had been planning for months yep. going forward. And how that complex mix played out, I'm not exactly certain. I still have unanswered questions. I want to get to the bottom of it because at least six people have lost their lives, including, tragically, a U.S. Capitol Police officer. And that's unacceptable. We should all get to the bottom of that. And whether you're a far-right activist or a far-left activist, advocating violence, perpetuating violence against your fellow citizens is 100 percent unacceptable. I think we should all be united on that basic fact. Yeah, the former chief of the Capitol Police called it in his testimony yesterday a coordinated military-style attack. He said people there were prepared for war. Congressman.